Hey everyone, I'm Matt Dolan with Dolan Divorce Lawyers in Connecticut. And today what I'm going to talk about is a Supreme Court, Connecticut Supreme Court case called Dan versus Dan, which in certain circumstances limits the ability for a person who is receiving alimony to increase that alimony award. So let me first give you a little factual background on the case. So in this situation, the parties were divorced and they agreed that the husband would pay the wife $15,000 per month in alimony. At the time of the divorce agreement, the husband was earning around $696,000 per year, and the wife was earning very little, maybe eight to $10,000 per year. So because of that discrepancy in income, they agreed that the husband was going to pay the wife $15,000 a month in alimony. Now, 10 years later, um, the financial circumstances of the parties had changed. The wife was earning about the same, you know, eight to 10,000, except the husband's income had increased significantly. It went from $696,000 per year up to 3.24 million per year. So the wife filed a motion to modify alimony, seeking an increase in alimony based upon the husband's increase in income. So they had a hearing in the Superior Court, and after the hearing, the court awarded an increase of alimony from $15,000 per month to $40,000 per month, plus 25% of any bonus income of the husband. Um, and they ordered that modification based on the fact that the husband's income had increased. So let me just back up. In order to modify alimony, you have to so show a substantial change in circumstance. So something has to have changed, which warrants a modification. So the court found that the substantial change in circumstance was an increase in the husband's income, uh, which warranted an increase to alimony. So the husband felt that that decision was unfair and he appealed the decision to the Supreme Court. And they ultimately overturned the decision and basically changed the rules on alimony modifications. Um, and what they found, the court's ruling of, and this will apply to all future cases, is that, and I'm going to read you some excerpts from the decision. So when the amount of the original alimony award was and continues to be sufficient to fulfill the purpose of the award, whether that purpose was to maintain permanently the standard of living of the supported spouse at the level that he or she enjoyed during the marriage, or to provide temporary support in order to allow the supported spouse to become self-sufficient, an increase in the income of the supporting spouse standing alone is not a sufficient justification to modify an alimony award. And it goes on to say, in short, when the sole change in circumstance is an increase in the income of the supporting spouse, and when the initial award was, award was and continues to be sufficient to fulfill the intended purpose of that award, we can conceive of no reason why the supported spouse whose marriage to the supporting spouse was ended and who no longer contributes anything to the supporting spouse's income earning efforts should be entitled to share in an improved standard of living that is solely the, the result of the su supporting spouse's efforts. So basically it's saying, you know, the, you know, normally the, purpose of alimony is to maintain the standard of living of the spouse or to provide some rehabilitative period. So it's saying that, you know, as long as that alimony award, you know, for example, whatever, you know, in this situation, $15,000 a month, as long as that $15,000 a month was sufficient to fulfill the standard of living that was enjoyed during the marriage, then an increase in the payors, so the person who's paying alimony, an increase in their income is not uh, a sufficient basis to modify alimony. So it goes on to say, when the initial award was not sufficient to fulfill the underlying purpose of the award, however, an increase in the supporting spouse's salary in and of itself may justify an increase in the award. For example, if the initial alimony award was not sufficient to maintain the standard of living that the supported spouse had enjoyed during the marriage, 
because the award was based on a reduction in the supporting spouse's income due to unemployment or underemployment as a result of an economic downturn. And after the divorce, the supporting spouse's income returns to its previous level, a modification might well be justified. So that, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. If, you know, somebody was earning 150K during the marriage, throughout the majority of the marriage, and then during the divorce proceedings, they happen to become unemployed. Well, you can't really, you know, enter a, a significant alimony award because the person who would normally pay, you know, assuming that the person who was earning 150 and the, the spouse of that person is, you know, earned like, 25k historically then normally they would be entitled to alimony but again because of that unemployment period they can't afford to pay alimony the higher income earner can't afford to pay alimony um, at a high level so you might say something like you know it's a dollar a year alimony for you know 10 years for example if it was a 20-year marriage you know often the rule of thumb on alimony is half the length of the marriage so in that situation, you might say it's a dollar a year alimony. And then if that person becomes reemployed, you can say, okay, they have become reemployed and you know they're earning back to what they were before. So you know, it can be modified upward based on a increase in the obligor's income. So, but you have to be careful in how you draft these agreements because this Supreme Court case, Dan versus Dan, says. We presume that the parties agreed that the amount of the award was sufficient to fulfill that purpose at the time of the divorce. So the purpose of alimony. So if you are the person who is receiving alimony and you feel that the alimony award that you're receiving is insufficient to maintain the standard of living that you enjoyed during the marriage you know for example it might be that you know obviously if you're getting divorced you're going from having to support one household to you know the parties are splitting and they then have to support two households so they might you know the person who's paying alimony might you know whatever they're able to afford still may put the person who's receiving alimony at a, in a position where they're not able to maintain their prior standard of living. So the assumption is going to be that the award, it's often going to be that the alimony award is sufficient to fulfill the purpose. So if you're receiving alimony and you want to have the ability to seek an increase in the if the payor's income increases, you need to put specific language in the divorce agreement, or you should. Something to the effect of, you know, the purpose of alimony is to try to maintain the standard of living of the supported spouse. However, the parties agree that the alim alimony award, agree you know, agreed to in this agreement is insufficient to maintain that standard of living. And you might want to specifically say that, you know, a increase in the obligor, so the person who's paying, an increase in their income standing alone is a basis to increase alimony. So those are the basics on the Supreme Court case, Dan versus Dan. Let, you know, call our office if you've got any questions. But the gist of it is that it's very difficult to increase alimony based on an increase, based solely on an increase of the income of the person who is paying alimony. Um, again, call our office if you've got any questions.